brought to you by Priority. Join Standard Chartered Priority Banking. to have you on the link once again tonight and uh, we continue to give information you can use and sometimes we have opportunities here tonight we're talking about fraud there's a general feeling that you know money is a bit scarce and once money becomes scarce then the clever guys called fraudsters start to you know want to steal your money and one of the main ways they use is the mobile phone and tonight we have no other than the people who know these things Airtel Uganda, and um, I'll ask the gentleman to introduce himself. He's, they know what I talk about, so he's here to tell us about how do they cheat you and how do you protect yourself. Let's start with intro introductions. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Julius Wejuli. I'm the customer experience lead for Airtel Money Uganda Limited. It's always a pleasure to engage with our customers and stakeholders. Julius, welcome. Thank you very much. We are going to teach people. <laughs> <laughs> let's start with glad to. Uh, let's start to be in class now. We are glad to. Fraud via the mobile phone is on the rise. What are the common ways I should look out for that I may be targeted by these uh, tricky guys? Uh, thank you. At Airtel, we look at this as uh, a conversation around uh, digital uh, literacy yeah. and financial inclusion. Yeah. We know that today the majority of Ugandans have started to transact electronically mm. and are moving away from physical money. Of course, uh, included, you see that uh, many Ugandans depend on mobile financial services for their livelihood. Absolutely. Uh, for example, if you look at the uh, UN report on uh, igniting uh, progress through the Sustainable Development Goals yeah. through digital financial inclusion, we see that in northern Uganda, uh, food security has increased by 45% mm. for, for households that use mobile financial services. Wow. We see that in Uganda, uh, women who use mobile financial services are more likely to mm. access health services and delivery. Okay. Uh, which means that women and children have better health outcomes through accessing prenatal services. So for us, the question of fraud is not just a question of U Airtel Uganda. It's a question for Ugandans and the systemic importance of mm. the payments to the economy. It's a threat to all these things. All of us. Mm. Our livelihoods, our productivity, our way of life. Okay. So how are the common ways fraudsters try to uh, uh, access us. Firstly, is uh, a typical fraudster yeah. uh, will reach out to you, uh, an unknown number, mm. and try to convince you to share a PIN or an OTP, a one-time password. Yeah. A one-time password and PIN are typically used for all your electronic payments or banking transactions, mm. so as to verify that uh, the initiator of the transaction is the actual holder and owner of account. Yeah. So what these firms are typically do is uh, initiate transactions mm. on various platforms and then attempt to convince you to share your PIN and OTP. Uh, they may tell you we are from Airtel Uganda, mm. we are from the regulator, uh, we are from various organizations. But the important thing is that to note is that every service provider in the market yeah. allows a customer to complete a transaction on their own. You should never share your OTP or PIN. Rule, that's my space. That's your space. Mm. At, at, at to the extent that you should be suspicious and terminate any engagement with anyone that asks you to share an OTP or PIN over email, over the phone, over WhatsApp. Mm. Correct. Okay. They, they will never be asked for. Uh, secondly, we, you should own your financial identity. All right. Your digital financial identity. Mm. You should be able to register your SIM card in your names. You should be able to transact on a bank account in your names. You should be able to register your, your taxation and uh, other uh, regulatory requirements yeah. or documentation in your name. So that when the stakeholders and industry players are doing back-end verification of various transactions, we can confirm mm. that the initiator is the one transferring money from this mobile wallet or to another. Okay. Or in case a fraudster attempts to perform a certain type of transaction, uh, we can pick up a, a name mismatch in the course of the investigation. Mm. What we see is that many Ugandans, uh, out of their own um, choice, or sometimes not, uh, transact uh, with mobile money wallets, 
which are not registered in their names. I have seen some of those. Yes, correct. What that does is that compromises mm. your ability to seek redress. Mm. Uh, it also compromises your ability to correct uh, in case your account is, um, is taken over by a third party. Yeah. Because the first question Airtel will ask is uh, please provide evidence of your ownership of this account. That is yours. That is yours. Mm. Before we initiate investigations or reverse a transaction yeah. or support uh, the authorities with an investigation. Okay. So make sure you transact on, if you have not yet, please register your SIM card and your Airtel Money Wallet in your own names. All right. Yes. Now, uh, Julius, there's this common phenomenon. And even me, I've uh, faced it. People call me uh, from Slovenia, Slovakia, Bulgaria, Senegal. Eh? Well, I've not picked, but I suspect they're fraudsters. Tell me if somebody calls me with a foreign number. What does that, what does that, how does that work? And why should I be careful? Okay. In the course of Airtel protecting its consumers and customers, we have noted uh, that from time to time, mm. uh, criminal networks will collaborate across borders. Uh, the criminals in Uganda yeah. uh, who have been forwarded to the police, uh, who have had their phone numbers blocked mm. and, uh, need, and national identification numbers under investigation, understand that if I request a fraudster from another country to initiate uh, a fraud scheme, yeah. the chances of it being uh, tracked and identified in the shortest time as possible mm. are limited. Mm. So we see that uh, from time to time fraudsters may initiate uh, uh, criminal uh, demands from yeah. other, other territories and countries. Okay. We also know, I was read the newspapers, all, we all know that there are criminal gangs across the world that attempt to initiate uh, bank or mobile wallet transactions mm. all over the world. Mm. And uh, they'll try to uh, dress up these transactions as, as legitimate by accompanying them uh, with uh, voice calls. Yeah. Uh, what we tell our customers is, Verify before you transact. Okay. If you have no business in uh, Senegal or Slo Uzbe Slovenia, Slovenia or yeah. Uzbekistan, yes. there is no reason for you to enter your PIN to approve a transaction mm. having engaged with a party from uh, Uzbekistan. Yeah. Uh, you should verify every transaction, not just through the voice or mobile phone, mm. but through the formal communication channels. Mm -hmm. Have you received uh, supporting communication? Have you been in touch with this person? Yeah, they claim that you have received money from somewhere through uh, one of these uh, money, money transfer, the international ones. And uh, so we are, we are calling to help you get the money. Correct. So mm. typically what would happen is uh, if you're receiving uh, funds through an international money uh, transfer partner, yeah. uh, the initiator and the sender of the money will communicate in you with you in parallel. They will send you a WhatsApp message. They'll yeah. send you an email of the transaction details. Mm. But there is no reason you should believe, having not engaged in any such way, that uh, someone out there yeah. has been sent uh, by uh, someone from whom you inherited money <laughs> and you're going to achieve, uh, receive a $1 million gift. No. The same behavior we have towards physical cash. Mm. We should have towards electronic money. Uh, if you walk the streets of Kampala and ask someone to give you change of 20,000 shillings, they will be very Cautious, hesitant. Cautious, yeah. Because they believe you might give them fake money. Mm. We need to see that same behavior carry to electronic money. Okay. And once the fraudsters get into your accounts, they may use them for onward fraudulent activities, mm. which you do not want. Okay. So verify before you transact. Julius, um, what kind of people are we dealing with? It's, I understand sometimes we're not, we not asking for sophistication, but they're sophisticated. What kind of people are we dealing with? What are they capable of? We need to know what, a bit of what we're dealing with here. Uh, what I would say mm. uh, is the people we are dealing with are not just in Uganda. Mm. The people we are dealing with are committed uh, because uh, these schemes are typically not started in Uganda. No. If you read the global press, they will start in similar economies mm. across the region. So what these fraudsters do is they'll carry schemes from country to country. Mm. Uh, they are organized, they're dedicated. Although we do know that uh, law enforcement is always on, uh, on close on their heels. Yeah. That is why the schemes will evolve from time to time. Mm. So what we need to know is uh, they're dedicated and as soon as you grant them opportunity, they will take 
uh, the whole nine yards. Mm. They will take the entire opportunity to utilize your account uh, to further schemes, not just in Uganda, but outside Uganda. Okay. So it is important to understand that I will not transact unless I have engaged prior uh, with a third party relating. There must be a starting point before we start discussing. There must be something that, that, that has happened before. Correct. Mm. Correct. And particularly because I, I, I referenced uh, digital and financial identity. Yeah. Once that is compromised, the same way a social media account is compromised, mm. uh, messaging will be initiated. It's the same thing with your financial mm. identity. Once that is compromised, you may find transactions initiated or requests. The most basic scheme would be to reach out all your contacts and ask them to provide um, provide support. So you are also endangering other people exactly. by being hit. Exactly. Mm. So it is quite similar to an epidemic. Protect those around you by protecting yourself, yourself first. Yourself first. Mm -hmm. All right. The, the final takeaway. Uh, so what's the bottom line? We are dealing with the clever guys. Correct. We are going dig to it's inevitable. And yet we face that animal. What's the concrete final takeaway? Things that I should remember. Correct. I saw Julius when I'm when Sam Ofere calls me, I remember Julius on the screen and say, <laughs> he said this. Please say it. <laughs> <laughs> the takeaway is that do not share your pin or OTP or one time password over email or the phone. The second is register and protect your financial and digital identity yeah. in a manner you can verify and own. Thirdly, verify before you transact. Make sure you have supporting documentation mm. before you engage in uh, even local transactions. Yeah. Uh, do not uh, click on uh, links that uh, are not verified. Uh, quite often you receive emails from various service providers. Mm. Uh, but if you look closely at the email address, you will see that um, the details and uh, nomenclature are quite changed. Mm. So if you're to engage with a local financial services partner, uh, go onto the web and look for their op website bef and, and then continue to their login pages. Okay. Do not simply rely on uh, what you receive in your email. Okay. Verify before you transact. Okay. Uh, lastly, of course, uh, quite often customers will, uh, will, 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 will might be victims of, of this. Yeah. But what is important is to note that once you are suspicious, once you have uh, been compromised, treat your electronic wallet the mm. same way you treat your bank account. Yeah. Block your SIM. Uh, Airtel provides you the opportunity to block your SIM via star 100 hash. Yeah. Uh, my account, option three, you can block a SIM. Yeah. Uh, call your bank and tell them the mobile number I use for these bank transactions, yeah. please put it on hold uh, while I, I sort, uh, sort this out. Okay. Report to the police. Your quick action is what determines the positive outcome. All right. Thank you so much, Julius. Um, Well-rounded viewers, you can't say you have not heard. And I can add one thing, apply breaks. Any, don't, don't be in a hurry. Especially issues concerning, I've given you money, that kind of nonsense. Take your time. Check, as Julius said, check so that you don't lose. Normally they want you to be in a hurry. Exactly. They want you to be in a hurry. They want to take advantage of you in a hurry because you want money you did not work for. Let's watch ourselves. That was the link. We hoped, we hope actually, this will protect you and your financial transactions as you go digital. That was the link, and we thank Standard Charity Bank for supporting us. Thank you. family. We know you want to build a legacy for your children. We do that with protection and investment solutions. Your priorities get our priority. Join Standard Chartered Priority Banking.